Cybersecurity experts are warning of another massive ransomware attack. Potentially, they say it could come as soon as tomorrow and possibly be much bigger than Friday's international cyber extortion strike. That hit organizations, schools and health agencies in 150 countries. Matt Tate is an international cybersecurity expert and we've reached him in London. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Let's talk about Thanks this. Me. Our pleasure. Talk about this. The chances of an attack coming as some warn as early as tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so this attack has used uh, a known vulnerability that was patched by Microsoft back in March, but uh, a number of organizations haven't patched their computers. And after this attack has started, really we can be expecting more attacks that are like this, using the same vulnerability against those organizations until they have managed to patch all of their computers to make sure that they're safe. There are those suggesting this could be a, an attack 2.0, that effectively, uh, having watched the reaction to the first ransom effort, they might have a new and improved, if you will, effort, and it could be even larger. What's your take on that? Well, certainly we've already seen that the uh, ransomware authors that produce this latest version of ransomware have been improving it. They've been making it uh, better as malware researchers have been identifying various parts of it that could be used to disable the ransomware. The ransomware authors have been pushing new ransomware that fixes those vulnerabilities pretty much in real time. Ransomware authors sounds like a fairly benign description of these people. Who do we think these people might be? Well, at the moment, we don't really know who they are. The, pe the, the, the ransomware is being distributed uh, via anonymous uh, uh, networks, and we know that uh, the, the, the payments are being made via the anonymous payment system, Bitcoin. But because this is such a large attack, uh, we can expect that law enforcement is going to be very interested in finding out who these people are. There's going to be a lot of interest in tracking these people down. This, of course, has a profit motive. This, the, the, the shift, are arguably, from malware to ransomware, where there's some reward involved for those. Uh, many have suggested and warned that this could be the way of the future. This is a, a new type of crime, and if it proves profitable, we're going to see more and more of it. Yeah, we're certainly going to see more of this. Uh, ransomware is not particularly new. Um, the anonymous uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, payment system has made it much easier for people to monetize these malware attacks. And really, this is uh, uh, just the same thing that we've been seeing before, but now happening on a much larger scale than we've previously seen. Now, much has been made of the fact that there was a cybersecurity expert, uh, a young man who effectively accidentally stumbled upon a way of disabling this latest ransomware attack. Uh, I guess that's good. On the other hand, aren't there a lot of uh, international government agencies uh, that are supposed to be doing this job for us? Well, certainly we saw uh, uh, yesterday or the day before, we saw uh, uh, someone discovered a kill switch in the original version of the ransomware that was being deployed. And he stumbled across this completely by accident. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, individual researchers are able to operate at a slightly faster pace than I think lots of big government organizations. But unfortunately, pretty much as soon as this uh, individual had found the kill switch, new ransomware variants were being released that had disabled this kill switch. So uh, really, the, the advice here is that people do need to be updating their software as quickly as possible because this kill switch is, is pretty much dead already. Well, can or should governments be playing a greater role? Um, I think certainly after this attack, we're going to have to take a step back and ask how it is that so many of these really critical organizations have not been installing their patches, whether or not there's uh, uh, market failures that perhaps legislators can get involved with to try and understand how we can make sure that these types of attacks can't happen again in future. Now, we have not had any official confirmation from the Canadian government uh, that Canada has been targeted in this, but the figures of 150 countries would strongly suggest that some Canadian assets might well have been hit. What's your opinion about Canada's vulnerability? So we certainly know at this stage that a number of organizations, a number of individuals inside Canada have already been targeted. At the moment, many of these businesses haven't been very forthcoming to say that their businesses have uh, uh, been affected. I think we're going to probably see this in the coming week when you know businesses come back to work on Monday and they're going to discover that they're not able to do uh, the work that they want to do. Uh, but this is a global attack. This has affected all countries and, and Canada is, is no exception there. Okay, final question. If governments aren't doing perhaps as much as they could be doing or should be doing, what can individuals do? Because let's face it, this is pretty daunting stuff. 
Well, this particular attack was uh, using a vulnerability that Microsoft patched back in March. So for individuals and for businesses that have been installing their security patches, their Windows updates, uh, they won't have been affected by this particular uh, attack, or, or their computers won't have been affected by this particular attack. And so people that are able to keep their computers updated and also to make sure that they're installing and using antivirus software, that's the best way to keep this type of stuff out of your systems. Okay, stay vigilant. Thanks for this, Matt. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. International cybersecurity expert Matt Tate speaking to us live from London.